Hey, I'll just got in the car here. We're going to be driving from Senegalia, which is a uh, beautiful little town here on the Adriatic coast. I've been living in this area for about 10 years. And uh, we're going to drive 30 kilometers into the countryside, into the community of Archevia. That is where uh, the tower house is located. Um, Archevia is known for the nine castles of Archevia. And one of those is Castello di, uh, Castello di Castiglioni. And that is where the tower house is located. So we're going to go there. I'll give you a tour of the, uh, of the tower, and uh, we're going to do a little walk around through the Castello. Okay, let's go. Hello, my name is Joseph, and this here is Kobe. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about the tower. If you saw our first video, you know a little bit about the history of the house and how I found it and some of the work that's already been done. But doesn't really go into detail about the tower. So what we're going to do today is talk more about the tower, go through each of the different levels, and um, hope you enjoy it. Let's go. So we're going to start our tour of the tower here on the ground level. We can access the ground level through this door here, which uh, leads out into my little garden and parking area. Okay, I just opened the door and then the wind blew it closed. So, and you're going to have to be um, where no, I'm going to say you just have to excuse me because I've got a lot of stuff in here. And uh, walking in here, you can see it's a stone room with a round ceiling. And uh, to be honest with you, I haven't been in here for several months. So I don't know if there's any creepy crawlies running around in here. But um, I guess if I come in here and kind of look back at the door... Let's go over here. Let's see. Look back at the door here, and you'll see Kobe. Well, it's not adjusting for the for the light. There we go. So, come, Kobe. You can come in if you want, baby. Uh, as I said, I've got a lot of stuff in here. In fact, um, all of the tools that I found inside the the workshop upstairs are are all in here. I didn't want to throw away anything because I just thought it was so cool to have all of these tools. So most of them are stacked down here at the bottom. I can show you Let me get a little bit closer here. Now, I don't know anything about carpenter, you know, being a carpenter, but um, there are all these various hand tools and blocks of wood and I didn't not quite sure what all of this is, but uh, as well as the old saw. But this is the inside of the ground level, looking back this way, here. Now, I was speaking to an older gentleman that lives here in the Castello, and he told me that years ago, the carpenter's family kept a pig in here. Now, uh, there's no evidence of a pig ever living in here, but... Uh, yeah, that makes sense. What a sad little life to live in here, though. There's no, like I said, there's no windows in here. Um, there is, I don't know what this ever was, but there's a hole up here, and it's blocked off. Uh, I guess it went up to the second level. I don't know. But let's uh, step on out. We'll head on into the second level. There's a lot of stuff in here. Hopefully I don't break my neck trying to get out of here. All right, let's get out of here, Pop. Okay. Good boy. Let's uh, go ahead and get this closed. This little ring here. All right. And... Come on, Cope. Don't go anywhere. Let's go. Uh, so we're going to come in here to the garage. And we're going to go up these stairs. Here, dun, dun. lead the way, Kobe. Let's go. Come on. And so these stairs here will take you up to the top level if you go to the left. And if you go to the right, you end up in the carpenter shop. So what we're going to do is come down into the second level. 
Now, as I said before, this is the level that has the windows. There's a bit of an echo in here, so let's go in here, take a look. And like the ground floor, it has a round ceiling. Everything is in stone. And each little window here has a different view. So let's take a look here. Looking out here, we can look down onto the parking lot. Let's move to the another, another window here. This one here looks should look out into the countryside. Yeah. And then this window here shows the approach by road. As you can see, cars coming up. All right. And then of course, looking back at this Kobe, it gives you a better look of what this room looks like. All right. And uh, the floors, I really like the floors. Everything is, uh, I, this is not, I don't think this is the terracotta. I'm not quite sure though. But um, I was told that at some point in the last 100 years that um, there was a big earthquake that destroyed most of this village. And uh, this tower had completely collapsed. And it was rebuilt by either by the state or by the community here. And, uh, and so now we don't have to worry so much about that. It's quite a bit stronger than it was before. So now what we're going to do is go up to the top of the tower. Now I'll tell you, when I first came to visit this house, we entered, uh, well, we, meaning I entered with my agent from the inside of the Castello. I'm kind of walking through the house. I was, uh, I thought, oh, okay, yeah, it's cool. Uh, but wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Then we entered the carpenter shop. And I thought, wow, this is really cool space. But when we walked out here and I saw this view, this panoramic view, I'm, I was done. I said, okay, yeah, bet. I just don't know how anybody could come out to this spot here and not just be absolutely amazed by, by the view here. You can see out all across the hillside. Now, from here, you can see, let's see, there are at least three, four castles, other castelli that you can see. Now, I say castle, but the Italian word castello translates into castle, but, uh, you know, as an American, I think of castle, I think of Disney World, you know, <laughs> so... I prefer to use the, the word uh, Costello. So let's go in here into the workshop. Again, I'm, you know, I've been doing some work in here, so it's, uh, it's not, uh, I would say exactly in the best condition, but it's not, I mean, it's organized for me. <laughs> um, these two benches here were the, uh, were used by the carpenters. I was told there were four in here at one point. Now there are only two. I actually had them cleaned up. They look a lot better than they used to. Uh, and a lot of the work that I've been working on, or a lot of the work that I've been doing has been in this room here. This room is 90 square meters when you calculate the left and right sides of this wall. We go walking into this side here, you can see this space. Now, if you saw my first video, then um, this is the spot where the big table saw was located. It was right here. Now, what's here now is my debris field <laughs> because as I did the work in the other wall, in the other room, I took off all the old plaster, all the old mortar between the stone, and I just kind of piled it up here. And when I, 
when I see renovations going on at uh, these people that have these farmhouses out in the countryside, I'm, I'm a little jealous of the fact that you have a place where you can put this sort of thing. You just put it out in a spot out in the, in the garden somewhere or behind the house. I don't have that luxury here. I have it piled up here and I'm going to have to pay someone to come take it away. So now I've pointed all of this wall here and um, finish this one here. Let's see, I don't know, two weeks ago and just moved into the next room. Now, this particular wall here, it um, actually had someone help me, which made it go by uh, a lot faster. It's uh, a lot harder, or it take, not harder, but it takes longer when you do it alone. Um, but I do have some, there'll be some future videos that show the work that was done here. And then after that, I wanna create some new ones that shows the work that's going on in here. That's why that tarp is down there. I've been in the process of cleaning out all the old mortar so I can prepare it for, for pointing. And then looking up, you see, these are the original beams that held this house up. Now, I want to tell you, um, I want to show you this one beam here. Because when I first saw it, I thought, okay, I was, that was a bit suspect for me. Because when you look at this beam here, right, these other beams go directly into the wall. But now look at this one. But there's a plank underneath. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. There's a plank underneath that stuck in the wall and then is holding this beam up. And uh, I brought in a structure engineer and I said, look, man. I'm a little concerned about this. And um, he assured me, no, 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 no. He said, that, that, that'll that hold. And I guess when you think about that, this Costello, the construction in this Costello started in, um, in the 11th century. And so this house may have existed since about the, in some form, since about the 12th century, maybe later, I don't know. Um, but um, this, okay, let me point something out here. You, you see this beam here. This is a big, big double beam here, right here. And the reason why it's a double beam here and not a single beam like in the other area is right above here is where the stairs were. And again, if you saw the intro video, um, you'll see where we demoed out the stairs. The first time I walked into this space, there was a pole that was under, right in the center of this beam. There was a pole that somebody had stuck there and it went down to the floor, right? And uh, I think it's because over the many years that have gone by, this beam started to bend from the weight above it because it was not only holding up the stairs, it was also holding up the two floors above it. And um, so what we did was we pulled out the stairs and then added two beams on the upper levels made of iron. And when we did that, that beam flexed upward and the pole just fell to the side. I mean, and th that made me feel better about the structural integrity of this area, too. As I said, uh, I was a little concerned about that uh, particular beam. Now, here, there were stairs, but they didn't come. Okay, so originally, the, um, let's see, the workshop here was not connected to the house, but that was my plan. So um, we demoed the stairs that actually went from this door that leads out into the uh, that's uh, into the Costello. And these from this door, they went straight up to here. They did not come down. Uh, but the plan was to put stairs that start here and then kind of go up to the door and then curve and then go up to the next level, right? So let's go ahead and see if we can go out to the 
city center here. I say city center. <laughs> Definitely not a city center. We're going to go out to the inside of the Costello. Let's take a look here. All right, so you see here, this is the door I was talking about. This was the original door that led up into the house. And then over here, you have the two, it's like a double door that goes into the carpenter shop. And then these windows up here were uh, bedrooms. That window in the middle there was a bathroom. All right. So let's take a look around the Costello. Let's walk around through here because it is really beautiful here because this, uh, as I said, there was a, an earthquake that destroyed a good part of this, uh, well, I say a good part, but destroyed most of this Costello. And um, it was restored, but since it's been restored, it's also been well kept, which is a, an excellent thing. So let's go ahead and start at one of the two entrances. So, and then we'll pick up the video from there. Okay, so we made it here to the top of the stairs. And this is the small bridge that leads into, like I said, there are two entrances here. And this is the, probably the primary, I would say. Uh, most people, when they come into the Costello, they're entering from here. All right. Now, since this, uh, Costello was restored. The people that live here are very proud of this place and they, they do as much as they can to have events here and really promote the place and, 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 and to really keep it um, as far as the upkeep goes, right? They, they keep it very nice here. And uh, let me tell you, if you do anything that takes away from the beauty of this place, they're going to tell you. And when we first walk in, you'll see to the right this very narrow corridor here. It's very narrow. This is probably the, of, of all of the little walkways here, this is probably the most narrow. And it goes down around to the, to the left. We're going to continue this way. You can see here. Now, my house is down here. When you enter from the main door, you'll probably recognize the outside as we come down here. Now, as I was saying, they have various festas here, they call them. Uh, probably the most, or no, not probably, probably the, the most well-known is the um, Festa delle Pane, which is the bread festival that they have here. Just outside the Castello, near where, where I was standing, is a restored mill. And during that, uh, that festival, they'll grind corn and make cornmeal uh, and I think also maybe um, some sort of grain and uh, they'll use that to make the dough for the bread and then you're going to see here there is a community oven that anyone that lives here can actually use and I'll, I'll point it out to you. So we're going to walk through here. There's some workers over here doing some restoration work. We'll walk over here. Now this truck is actually, there, there are two main piazzas here and this truck is parked in, in one here and during Christmas, this is where they put the Christmas tree. We're going to continue walking this way. Now, I don't know if you saw it back there, there was a lady that exited a shop there, that was a hair salon. And then here, is a tabacaria, which is a place where you can buy cigarettes and such. Uh, let's take a walk down here. And, you know, you hear about these houses that uh, are being sold in Italy for one euro. You're not going to find that here. Um, well, there's going to be some wind noise coming down here. Gonna have a bit of a wind noise here. I don't have my the wind break on my mic. Let's go down here. Uh, there's some olive trees here. Another view 
looking out onto the countryside. Okay. Now it's telling you about the about the oven. It's a, a brick oven that is great for making pizzas or or bread. And as I said, it's um, just a part of the Castello here. And if you would like to use it, there was a little chalkboard in there where you could just put your name and put the time and the day that you wanted to use it. And you just come down here and use it. And then you just have to make sure that when you're done, you clean it up. And now we're standing right next to it. So let's take a look at it here. We came from down down there. We could have walked. If we continued straight from that first piazza, we'd have come through here. So, but I want to give you a closer look at the little oven here. It's just so cool. You have some branches here that you can use to to start the fire because you don't use you know briquettes like you do in a barbecue in the U.S. <laughs> and, and here's the little chalkboard, and now nobody has, uh, has it uh, reserved, but you can come here, write your name, time and date, and then you can use this oven. And then here you have the tools for sliding the, the bread or the pizza, whatever you're cooking in and out. And uh, this is just so cool, right? I mean, let's take a look in here. Let's see if we can open it. Yeah, it's full of sticks right now. But uh, they do a good job of really keeping this place clean and uh, making it inviting, not just for the people that use it, but for tourists that come. So let's take a walk, continue down to the bigger piazza and the church. Ciao. Ciao. You can see the clock tower. Oh. Lots of wind, lots of wind. Oh gosh, I should have used that, that wind muff. So, I mean out here, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the view, but first I want you to kind of get a look at this castello here, the houses that are here, in this area. And this is the, the church. And this church is, uh, it still functions and uh, people are here every Sunday. Uh, in fact, my son did his uh, first communion here. And looking down from the top of the wall, you can look down and you can see where cars were parked. I can only imagine, you know, when this place was, um, I mean, just defending this place, having these huge walls, um, must have been very difficult for any invaders to get up here. But I know I looked at the history of this place and it was, I think it was in um, 1300, it was sacked completely. and. Uh, It became part of the, the, their larger community. So I don't know if the church is open. We can go ahead and take a look. I think it's closed. It's uh, really nice on the inside though. Uh, I think the church is going to be closed. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's closed. So let's go ahead and go to the other entrance. As I said, there are only two entrances into the castle. I mean, unless you go through a house like, like mine. And, uh, oh, here's a house for sale. Huh. Okay, so look at the tower here. And this thing rings every half hour. So, let me come over here. This is the other entrance. Ciao. Let's see here. Wow, that's actually new. I don't know, maybe had that repainted or something. That's really nice. Let's see. 
I don't know what this says. This, I don't uh, know Latin. I have to ask my son. Um, my son studies Latin in high school here. Not because he wants to, because it's a requirement. You imagine that in the U.S. So, if you look out here, see a little garden just outside. We're going to walk down these stairs and then look back. So you get a view of what this other entrance looks like. Gosh, I really wish I would have put this wind muff on. So it wasn't windy where I was standing down there. Uh, okay, so here's the other entrance here. I think actually I, I like this entrance better, but um, it's not as easy to access from here because when I pointed out from the bridge, you come from this road here and it circles around the Castello and exits out down the bottom here and it's one way so you have to enter from the other side so this is not the primary entrance if you if you're coming here it's because you parked like in this area here and then you'll walk and you'll come up there this walkway up here now you see there's stairs here on either side and then it's flat here in the middle and I think it's because um, it was easier or it made it easier to pull a cart up here either with a horse or, or even a handcart, if you wanted to push it up here, then uh, you could easily do it without having to worry about the stairs. So we're going to walk back up here. We're going to make our way back to the tower. Uh, let's take a look at this view. I don't think I showed you the view from up here. It's really, really nice. Very nice view. Very high up. Let's take a look here. All right. We're going to go ahead and make our way back up to the tower, and uh, we'll resume from there. as I got here to the end of my tour that I really should have started with a disclaimer to explain that I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'm not a professional video, video editor. Uh, I will stumble on my words. I'm not going to get every shot in perfectly. Uh, but I just wanted to share with you something that I thought was truly unique. And um, I really hope to turn it into something, um, something special. Um, and not taken away from the historic character of the house. And um, I hope you'll follow along with me, um, even subscribe to my channel, that would help me a lot. And um, stay with me, and, and um, like I said, I, I want to create something special, and um, I'm probably going to need help doing so, not just local help, but also for my viewers. So. Um, Stay with me. Ciao.